Google, what is your purpose? I am an artificial intelligence powered assistant that is always ready to help. I can find what you need on the web, recommend cute cat videos on YouTube, send tasks to Notion, and take over the world. Got it. Wait, repeat those last two again? I said, send tasks to Notion and world domination. Oh my god, this is an emergency. This is not a drill. It's time for Notion API integrations part two. My name is Conrad, and I'm a creator that is endlessly passionate about finding new ways to solve everyday challenges. And today, I'm going to teach you how to create awesome integrations with the official Notion API that will level up your productivity at home and in the workplace. If you want to learn the basics of how the Notion API works and a few common use cases to get warmed up with, like Google Calendar and email, watch part one here. In this video, I'm first going to show you how to use the API to automatically share your wins to the world for the motivation and support from your friends, family, and community, and make sure you watch until the end to learn how you can control Notion with only your voice. I'm super passionate about the idea of multiplayer for personal development. When we're on our own growth journeys, it's not always easy to remember that there are others who are on similar paths and we don't need to struggle alone. Using the API, we can build a workflow that enables us to share our adventure with the world. Imagine if Notion could automatically send a text to a friend whenever you finish a difficult project, a tweet out to your followers whenever you reach a major milestone in your life, or even sharing the task that you're working on today with your peers with a click of a button. I love building in public because you can have a sense of accountability to motivate you to finish your work because you've already shared it with others, get congratulations on tasks that you've already completed, and lastly, by sharing, you can start meaningful discussions, whether you're inspiring others to follow in your footsteps or learning from others on how they're accomplishing something that you want to do. So let's start by setting up a trigger for Notion tasks that are recently completed in Automate.io. So let's start by creating a bot. We're going to press this button right here and we're going to select the trigger app to be Notion. A pop-up will show up that shows that I need to connect Notion to my workspace. I can click Authorize, and then it's going to ask me to access my workspace. I'm going to say Select Pages, and I'm going to say I wanted to select my demo workspace, which is what I'm using currently for this video. I'm going to click Allow Access, and then it's done, and I can press Save. Then we're going to make sure that it triggers on the updated database item. We're going to click on that right there. And then we're going to find the database which we want to use this with. We're going to use custom value because we want to specify the database ID. And then going into our dashboard for make life simple, we see our view of the success plan, which is our task manager, project manager, goal planner, all in one. And essentially what we want to do is click the six dots, click copy link, find an empty space, paste that link, and then we can remove the link so that we can find the database ID, which is found right between the URL between the forward slash and the question mark. We're going to copy that, and then we're going to go back into Automate and paste the database ID so that it will automatically pull all the fields into Automate. Now, let's do some things to make sure that our database is ready to share our wins with the world. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that we have a few properties that are going to help us keep our privacy in case there are things that we don't want to share. So if we open up a random task, just like so, we can go to the bottom here, show more properties and see all the different properties that it's currently showcasing. So for example, we might see that right now there is this section for a checkbox for share with family. So we want to set a filter that we only continue the workflow if share with family is checked off. We also see something that says share status. Essentially, this status lets us know if we've already shared this successfully to whatever application we want. In this case, I've just made one for shared with Gilded, and I'm going to talk about that real soon. Another thing that you're going to want to make sure you have properties for is status. So you have a few statuses for anywhere between backlog and complete. And having the closing date is also really nice so that you know which day you ended up finishing the task. So with all that prep being done, let's go ahead and make sure that these properties are well filtered for. So going into automates, we're going to first select a filter right here. And we're going to say continue only if we have a completed item, right? So we want to say status right here. Property status equals complete. Next, we're going to want to add another filter. This time we're going to continue only if share with family 
is checkmarked and in this case equals true. Next, we're going to make sure that it hasn't already been shared before. So setting up a filter to continue only if share status is not empty. Next, this is going to be the exciting step. We're going to decide which app we want to share our win to. And you can choose from their entire list of apps, from social media apps like Facebook and Twitter, other productivity tools like Airtable, or you can even text it to a friend. For our case, we're actually going to send the information into our Coex3 family community space, which we have a space for wins and roadblocks that allow you to share your wins so that we can give you constructive feedback and motivation to continue driving towards your goals. And to achieve this, we're going to make this a web hook. You can find detailed instructions on how to do this inside our community page, but for now, I'm just going to create some demo data so you can know the gist of how it works if you are curious. So what we want to do here is get the webhook URL, paste it in there. The data is going to be pretty similar no matter which app you're sending it to. Essentially, what we want to do is just figure out what information we want to send. So for example, you might want to send who it's created by. So created by has just handed in a new, and then we can say what type of success it is. So we can say it is maybe it's a task. And then we can also add in the name of the item that was finished, for example, the name of the task. So we can say name and so on and so forth. Really, any information that you want to share with the world, it's entirely up to you. And this is how you do it. Again, I'm just showing you the webhook as an example. You can select any app you like on this step. I'm just showing you how we would do it inside the community. So the next thing we want to do is to make sure that if we have passed this webhook step, we will never send this item again. And how we can guarantee that is by going to the notion and then making sure that we are updating a database item. The database is going to be the success plan. So right here, and then we're going to make sure that the page ID matches the page ID that we triggered on. And then we're going to scroll down to the share status. And then from here, we're going to say shared with gilded, which means that we're going to add that status to this item so that it won't pass through this filter again, even if the page was modified in the future. We're going to click save. And then we're going to turn on our bot. Coming back to the Make Life Simple page, we see all our tasks ready to be worked on for today. What we can do here is we can hit this three dots and we can show the properties to see our share with family checkbox, just like so, so that we can check them off depending on what we actually want to share with the world. I'm going to give you a quick example. And what we're going to do is only check mark one of them, but still hand in both quests. So we're going to highlight these two and then drag it into the section for our completed task. And then we can see that we've earned the appropriate amount of gold and experience for these tasks. If we go now into our community application, we'll actually see that only one of those tasks is handed in and the other task, because we didn't check off share of family, it doesn't show up in this list. Awesome. And the way that we set up this connection is so that whenever we click on the item, the URL here, we can actually see that it links back to the Notion page so that we can edit it whenever we need or keep us reminded on which task it actually was. To use webhooks in Automate.io, you'll need a premium plan, which the lowest tier is $9.99. So we've actually created our own API server as part of the Coex3 family connection project, which currently enables our patrons to send their wins into the community for free. With our server, we've also built an awesome workflow that enables our community to have their own button inside the workspace, which shares the active task that they're working on in today's quest. Now let's talk about the most exciting integration yet using Google Assistant to automatically add entries to any Notion database. And here, the possibilities are truly endless. Let's show you how it works. Real quick, if you like the contents I've shared in this video so far, please do drop us a like and subscribe. It helps our channel reach more people like you. Let me know in the comments what other integrations you'd like to see us build. We'd love to hear from you. So if you want to connect your Google Assistant into your Notion, this is how you can do it. So first you go to a website called ifttt.com and then you can create your own applet. So you can start by saying if this, right, and I add, and we can choose Google Assistant here, Google Assistant. And then we can say, say a phrase of a text ingredient, which means that when you say, you know, the 
Google Assistant keyword, followed by a phrase like post a tweet or send a message to Notion or add a new task to Notion. This will essentially allow you to be able to add that text ingredient and pass it over to something like Notion. So we click on this and then we click connect. It's going to ask you if you allow IFTTT to access your Google accounts. And then if you click allow, then essentially the service will go forward. The first thing you can do is say new Notion task, and then we can add the uh, dollar sign after that. Or we can say new task in Notion uh, called, and then we also do that dollar sign as well. And then another way we can say is add a new task to Notion. And then we can add the text ingredient there. And what we want the system to say in response is I've added it to Notion. OK, perfect. And then let's create the trigger here. And then that. So basically what happens here is we're saying that when we do this Google Assistant trigger, then what should happen? OK, where should it go? And you can see already like there's different services like Airtable, which already have this connection. But right now, if I search Notion, it doesn't show up, right? Because Notion's API just came out. OK, so what we're going to do is a webhook. And we're going to click on webhooks and then we're going to uh, essentially make a web request to somewhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a web request to automate.io because we want to pass information over to automate.io. So we're going to go to automate.io. Uh, it's my other tab here. And then I'm going to create a bot. If I create a bot here, I can set, select a trigger app, which is going to be, um, let's call it a webhook right here. And if I use a webhook trigger event, we can say incoming hook. And then we can say set up webhook. So basically, you'll see something like this, right? And this webhook URL, you can just copy that. And once you copy that, you can go back to IFTTT and you can paste in the URL right here. OK, and then what you want to do is you want to do post right here, post your sending information out. And then the content, uh, you can do text plain is totally OK, which basically shows that I'm adding an ingredient from the phrase. So the text field is going to be uh, the information that's being sent from your Google Assistant. So I can click Create Action after that. So let's try that, Create Action. So if I click Continue, let's call this applet title Google Assistant to Notion. Okay. And basically what we can do here is we can start testing it out quickly so that we can send information over to Automate and just see what's happening. So one thing that I want to make sure I do is double check what is the actual uh, wording that we use. OK, so it's good to always remember. So what is the text ingredient? So new Notion task blank. We can route this information to any Notion database that we want. So for example, if we wanted to do something silly and we wanted to add it into our database for just the inbox, we might say something like, hey, Google, new Notion task, investigate about alpacas. I've added it to Notion. So you can hear that the Google Assistant just said, I'll add it into Notion, which is, again, our response that we wanted. And you can see right now in a webhook, investigate about alpacas becomes populated, which looks good. Awesome. So now that we have our webhook set up, we can now select an action app. We can go here and we can click Notion. We can add a new item to a page and we can select the database we want to add it to. Now, what we can do is we can select a custom value so we can specify the database ID, find the inbox right here open it up and then take the URL ID, which is just inside the uh, URL bar. And then I'm going to paste that right into here. And let's see if it shows up. It does. And basically now all we want to say is the incoming uh, information from the webhook. Let's just make that the name. And then that's actually it. We're done. It's simple as that. So let's test it out now, right? We have to see we can test it on, uh, turn it on and test it out. And now it's waiting for live data. OK, so what we're going to do again, just like before, we're going to remember our phrase. And if you have an easier phrase, maybe like quick task or whatever you want, um, really easy. Uh, but for example, let's just use uh, this. OK, Google. New Notion task. Check out the gamification project. I've added it to Notion. So we can hear that. It says, congratulations, your bot is all good. We can go into our inbox and we can see, check out the gamification project is right there in our inbox. And you can just imagine the opportunities here. We can have this sync up to our shopping list. We can have this sync up to our inbox here. It's really entirely up to you. And I'm just so excited that we have this ability now with the Notion API. So thank you all so much for watching this.
I'm so excited about the Notion API because it unlocks tremendous utility for our favorite productivity tool. Some of the integrations that we're working on inside the community and are excited by include two-way syncing of data to connect my contacts with my personal CRM called my network, daily summaries of your character progression, using voice flow to have a guided walkthrough of your reflections through Google Assistant, and our dedicated application which will gamify any productivity workspace. Stay tuned for part three. And in the meantime, if you want to be part of a highly educational and engaging learning experience with our community, join our Friday live builds on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, where we will also get a chance to influence the next build to be more beneficial and personalized for your growth journey. Huge thanks to our patrons for making our work possible. Your support means the world to us and keeps this project going. Thank you so much. I hope you have an awesome week ahead. And remember, make work fun, Get stuff done.